everybody welcome back to my channel and today I'm jumping on the spring bandwagon so quite a few youtubers are now going over their spring fragrances for you even though spring feels so far away the weather has been shockingly horrible these last few weeks but allegedly spring is on its way now there are a few signs that spring is on its way i've seen some blossom on trees i've seen daffodils and there was even some sunshine today briefly so spring is coming and therefore i've created a list of fragrances for you for spring these are fragrances i'm really looking forward to wearing in the springtime and, and there might be some here that you haven't tried before that you might like to know a little bit more about. So let's go. No particular order. I'm going to start with this one by Lush and it's called The Comforter. This is a black currant fragrance. It's a sweetened black currant, but it's still a bit tart. So it's great on those in between days, the cooler spring days. It's got a little bit of freshness and also a little bit of richness and sweetness and it's really lovely it kind of leans gourmand it feels like there might be a bit of vanilla in there it's really beautiful it's called the comforter it's quite a comforting scent without being rich and dense and overly sweet so i really like that one looking forward to checking that one out and how it works on a spring day next up we have sun milk flowers sun milk flowers is by sp parfums this one to me is a bitter sweet floral fragrance it's got some milkiness as the name might suggest but it reminds me of a field of yellow daffodils all giving off that narcissus scent which i love and it's got this bitter sort of greenness to it which conjures up the idea of the stems i actually haven't looked up the notes and i can't tell you what they are it's a very floral a slightly powdery bitter sweet scent that just completely conjures fields of yellow daffodils to my nose it's got that the powderiness of the stamen of a flower if that makes sense so it's super floral and definitely a yellow feeling scent so i think that one's perfect for spring it's packs a punch it's pretty powerful next up b by zoologist and i am so looking forward to wearing this one when the days get a little bit warmer it's very much a perfect comforting scent on the colder days and i've been loving it throughout the winter however i did wear it in madeira and the island of madeira is known for its year-round spring weather it's seasonally very spring-like all the way around and i wore it in madeira and i absolutely loved wearing it in madeira because I was really hoping that it was gonna work well in the warmer weather and it did so i think this would be fantastic in the spring you probably wouldn't want to wear it on a very hot spring day if you have one of those particularly hot spring days you might find this a little bit cloying but on the in-between days or the cooler days because it's quite rich because it's got this honeycomb sugary honeycomb smell to me that reminds me of a crunchy bar and because of that it's quite rich there's some heliotrope in here once you hit the more of the dry down which gives it that powdery almond like feel there's a bit of vanilla in the dry down as well and be, there's beeswax so it's kind of rich there's some ginger syrup in the opening which is again a little bit sweet so it's perfect for the in-betweeny days because i think it really blooms when days get a bit warmer but if they get too warm you might find it a bit too sickly sweet but i cannot wait to wear loads of that in the spring next up we have los angeles by gallivant and this is a perfect spring scent it makes you think of spring when you smell it it's got some tuberose but it's not that blousy brassy big boobs mini skirt type tuberose if that makes sense 
it's fresher and a bit cleaner there's some um, there's a touch of e for malto in here which is the ingredient of the moment in perfumery it's the number one reason why baccarat rouge is the way it is it's the reason why so many fragrances are now compared to baccarat rouge because people smell e for malto in a fragrance and they immediately think baccarat rouge now there's only a little bit of e for malto in here it is not as uh, anywhere near as uh, sugary sweet as Baccarat Rouge, but it just gives it a vibe of some candy floss, or as you might say, if you're from America, cotton candy. It's a bit of cotton candy. It's also got some Gayak wood, which is kind of rubbery, woodsy, smoky smell. And it's designed to bring to mind, what I think you call it asphalt or tarmac. So think LA, hot pavements, in the sun, and bright colours, vibrant, lots of stuff going on, and that's what you've got here. It, it really just feels like a perfect spring scent. Spring scent to put a spring in your step, and that's Galavant's Los Angeles. Next up we have 4,160 Tuesdays, and this is Centerpiece. Centerpiece is a beautiful, it's a frangy panny with green tea. It's a little bit vanillic, it's got a lot of texture, and it just has this sunshine springy feel without being overly fresh. The green tea, I think, gives it a hint of freshness. The frangy panies are very much exotic and rich. And it's just gorgeous, a fairly sweet fragrance. Again, you might not want to wear it on the hottest days, but really lovely for the in-between days and the cooler days. And it lasts really well, and it just smells gorgeous. It's, a, it's quite feminine, and it is definitely also a compliment getter. I've had compliments wearing that one. So that is Centerpiece. Next up we have, this is... A company called Agonist and the fragrance is called the Infidels and this is a Swedish house this fragrance has been out a long time this is my second bottle so I really do love it uh, in here you have uh, you've got pink pepper you've got cloves so you've got some spiciness you've got florals you've got jasmine Turkish rose you've got some ylang ylang and you've got some grounding notes like sandalwood, uh, patchouli, a popinac, cedarwood, vanilla. What you get from here though is, to me, it's a bit like a head shop. If you walk into one of those shops that sell drugs paraphernalia, incense sticks, candles, and matters for the esoteric inclined, it's one of those type smells it's almost like you're smelling a whole load of different flavored incense sticks at once but imagine them whirled around in the air so it's kind of transparent it's quite fresh in the opening it feels like a citrus blast but a powdery citrus rather than a very full-on zesty or juicy citrus it's more of a powdery muted citrus with the powdery incense and florals sitting underneath. It's really lovely, really interesting, kind of um, unusual, but definitely a perfect spring daytime scent. Agonist Infidels. And now we have Solstice Scents, and this one's called Victorian Picnic. This is really unusual fragrance. It definitely is a gourmand type fragrance. It opens with this, I think the flower's called Hyacinth. It's one of those um, flowers, it's usually kind of purple in color. Loads and tiny, tiny little purple flowers all over the uh, bush and butterflies love it. And it's got kind of a herbal green yet honeyed scent. And with that, you've got everything that's sweet and delicious that you might have at a picnic. So I always think it's called Victorian Picnic, and I always think of a Victoria sponge when I smell it. 
I, I can smell layers of the uh, actual sponge. I can smell the buttercream and the jam. I can smell scones and more cream, like clotted cream. It's a very sweet treat type fragrance, but this uh, green floral note cuts through and stops it being so full on, overly sweet. Once you've worn it for a while, it kind of dries down to a fairly straight up vanilla, but you get a good four hours of it being a little bit more unusual and eventually it goes down to a really beautiful natural smelling vanilla. And if you, at that point, if you find that boring, you could always just top up with something else that you think would work with a vanilla. But I really love this fragrance. It's gorgeous, it's very unique. Now this to me really does feel like spring in a bottle. It's called Angelique by Papillon Perfumery. And there's this kind of peppery dry greenness in the opening, which to me smells a little bit like galbanum, but not exactly, but it's in that kind of ballpark. Maybe there is galbanum, I don't know. It's not listed, but there is some iris. There's quite a lot of iris. And it's just a beautiful, there's mimosa, so you've got yellow flowers. And I do think that yellow flowers, to me, really conjure up the idea of spring. It's a bit fresh, yet when it dries down, it kind of mellows and almost melts with your skin to become one. And you just smell kind of clean and innocent, but definitely spring day, kind of dewy, like dewy grass very beautiful fragrance, Angelique. So it's something slightly different. We've got Tainted Love by Prada. And this is a, a makeup type scent. So if you like lipstick and powdery scents, then this is probably going to be your bag. But it's not overly sweet, this one. It smells like a combination of violet, iris, rose, but it feels like there's something else in here that cuts through anything sweet and levels it out, stops it being that sweet. And it's hard for me to pinpoint what that is. It could be something slightly green, slightly bitter, but it's really interesting fragrance. It's powdery, it's very powdery. It's a fresh and powdery. So when you when you spray it, the rose in here is quite fresh, and I think the violet is also a little bit fresh. And then it gets more and more powdery, and you feel clean, like you've got the all your nice makeup on. But it's a very translucent and airy fragrance. It's not heavy and thick, so it's great for the spring and it's called Tainted Love, and it's by Prada, and it's from their higher end line, the olfactory line. So I'm gonna save what I think is maybe the best to last. So I've got one more now, and then I'm gonna save the best to last. So this is the penultimate one, and this is Ellie Saab's Essence Number no. One Rose. Always looks so fingerprinted still and I am absolutely loving this so this is a rich jammy rose it's like you took a load of red roses and you condensed them down you just condensed them into this thick thick rich rose sauce but then when you wear it on your skin, it gets kind of sweeter. So it's actually got a little bit of bitterness to it. And I didn't really notice the bitterness myself, but a couple of colleagues at work smelt it and both pointed out there was something a little bit bitter in here. And I can kind of see where they're, where they're coming from. For me, this does remind me a little bit of Stella Rose Absolute, which was a favorite of mine going back many years. But when it dries down, it kind of changes, it sweetens, it gets a little richer, and I can smell 
a little tiny bit of vanilla, a little tiny bit of labdanum, maybe some benzoin, maybe a touch of cedar. But these things are very much, very light. And the main thing is the rose all the way through, but it just feels like it evolves. And there's a few more facets, but they're very much understated and overshadowed by the rose. But it's quite a light scent, so it's not a heavy projector. I get good longevity, but I don't get great projection. So I think it's a really great springtime, spring day fragrance for that reason, because you're just gonna radiate a touch of a lovely thick rose scent without it being heavy, if that makes sense. The rose is, is condensed, but then off your skin, it's lighter. And then as you wear it, it sweetens, almost caramelizes a little bit on your skin in a way that I really love. So essence number one, Rose by Ellie Saab. Discontinued, but people are finding it quite cheap. So I got this for less than 40 pound for the 100 ml bottle. I know other people in the UK have managed to score similar good deals. My YouTuber friend Lizzie from the YouTube channel Rose and Jones, she managed to score a bottle for I think a very similar price to what I got mine for but I understand it's a bit harder to get elsewhere so I do apologise if it's a, a pain in the ass for you to get hold of but here in the UK you can find these for good deals and if you love Rose then it's well worth checking it out so then i promise you i'd save the best till last when i say best i just mean the most spring like the springiest spring fragrance and here it is and this is mon precious nectar you see how it's yellow in color and it does smell yellow again because i do feel like yellow stuff suits spring so this has almond in it but it's a floral it's a, mainly a floral, it's an orange blossom fragrance with almond and the mildest, meekest hint of incense to make it a little bit more interesting and musk and vanilla but mostly it's about the floral. The floral followed by the almond followed by the musk and the vanilla in equal parts, kind of. It's absolutely beautiful and it just smells like spring. It just does. It's beautiful. So that is Mon Precious Nectar and I love it. So excited to have this bottle. I'd run out in my previous bottle. I'd, um, I'd literally got right down to the bottom and I've managed to do a swap with a lovely fragrant friend and now I've got all of this lovely juice to play with. So I'll be wearing a lot of that in the springtime. So that's it, that's my spring picks. There'll probably be more spring videos to come when I think of funny themes, like what spring fragrances to wear when you are buying your groceries or whatever lists I can come up with to try and make people click on my videos. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done already. And I will see you in the next one.